Okay, can we start? Ah uh, yes, doctor. Okay, uh, assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. So today I will be presenting a lecture on malignant melanoma. So as a customary, I start uh, with something, uh, some life lessons lah. So this is a Chinese proverb: Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. So what, uh, what are we want, what, what do we want to achieve with you guys? is you have the ability to become a safe and competent doctor. You have to ability, the ability to find the correct references. This is important because uh, nowadays, uh, every, everyone also can, uh, can post something. Everyone also can uh, recite an article, but not everyone can see which article is actually uh, the one useful, which article is evidence which article does not have many buyers. And also you have to know how you approach to a diagnosis. For example, let's say if you Google headache, you might find uh, diagnosis ra ranging from migraine, sinusitis to brain tumor. But if you, let's say Google migraine with, uh, let's say you Google headache with fever and neck stiffness, you will get a specific answer. For example, like meningitis. So this is uh, what we want to teach you. We want to teach you on how to ask the correct question, how to, uh, how to find the evidence so that later on, if there is an uh, update on the knowledge, you can uh, retrieve it easily. I think I've mentioned it in my SDD uh, group discussion uh, yesterday. So, uh, okay, we start uh, with... Uh, this is um, the table of content, uh, this uh, the classification. Uh, we start with some introduction, classification of melanocytic tumor, melanocytic nevus, dysplastic nevus, and melanoma. So basically, uh, these are the classification of skin tumor. So in the latest edition of WHO, so in any tumor in a uh, human, uh, we use widely accepted classification which is WHO classification in any organ. So this is the latest one. So this is the, the one uh, supposed to be uh, the classification of melanocytic tumor. It includes benign and malignant. But for uh, this is what you learn uh, in the postgraduate study later on. But for the sake of undergraduate, usually we just, uh, we just present uh, whichever common uh, for you guys to learn. Lah. So, okay, what are the melanocytic nevi? Melanocytic nevi is a benign neoplasm derived from melanocytes. Uh, it is a, uh, the melanocytes is a pigment producing cell with dendritic projection interspersed among the basal keratinocytes. So, the pathogenesis uh, mostly uh, caused by somatic mutation and gain of function in BRAF or RAS uh, gene. It is unclear, but usually induced senescence will prevent most of nevi to transform to melanoma. So clinically, important thing is it, it is tend to brown papule, uniformly pigmented, usually less than 5 mm, symmetrical, well-defined rounded border. So melanocytic nevi can be uh, congenital, and also can be uh, acquired. Congenital means it is present since uh, birth and acquired vice versa. So uh, the, uh, both of these uh, congenital and acquired usually presented as three different components, junctional nevi, intradermal nevi, and compound nevi. So uh, other than that, this uh, special variant of melanocytic nevi Spitz nevus, Clark dysplastic nevus, halo nevus, and blue nevus. So uh, we start with junctional nevus. Junctional nevus means uh, there is a nested melanocyte at the more epidermal junction. As you can see in the right, uh, right uh, picture here, uh, the nested melanocyte, the neoplastic lesion, is only at the dermal epidermal junction. Uh, okay, so that's why in the clinical, it's just pigmented macular lesion. It is not raised, it's just macular lesion and it's pigmented. And how you differentiate whether it's uh, dysplastic or malignant, usually if dysplastic or malignant, uh, the, the lesion is asymmetry, 
the border is not well defined and there is a color difference. Okay, so in this, uh, it is quite symmetrical. Uh, the color is quite uniform. It's tan brown, uh, and uh, it's uh, although it's a bit large, but it's uh, if it's increasing in size, then uh, we are worried lah. Uh, as same as histology, uh, it's symmetrical. Uh, usually, it's at the more epidermal junction, and there is a maturation descent. Okay, so for compound nevus, uh, you have a uh, tan brown pigmented lesion clinically. So uh, it is a uh, well defined border. The color is uniform, and uh, usually uh, the diameter is less than 5 mm, although the congenital nevus might be a bit larger. Uh, and uh, usually there's not much changes. Lah. Uh, so if you take the biopsy of this lesion, uh, you have this uh, nested melanocytes at the more epidermal junction and some are extending into the dermis. So uh, what important thing to differentiate is uh, the nested one, usually uh, the cells are a bit larger uh, but still uniform. Uh, there's not much of a nuclear pleomorphism, means there's no variation in size. And when it descends to the dermis, usually uh, the melanocytes usually get, get a bit smaller and it will, uh, it will uh, arrange in a bit of fascicles rather than nested. Nested means it's a bit round like this. Fascicle means there's a, a bit uh, wavy. Lah. So this is what we call maturation descent. So if, uh, if there is a maturation descent, means it is likely benign. But if it is absence with nuclear pleomorphism, at the dermis, and also you have mitosis at the dermis, then it's uh, it's uh, a bit, uh, it's no more benign. Usually it's uh, either dysplastic, dysplastic nevus or malignant nevus. So uh, we go on to intradermal nevus. Intradermal nevus, uh, same, it's uh, tan brown pigmented papular lesion. Usually it's uniform uh, color. The border is quite well defined, and you have... Uh, the size, as, as I mentioned, usually is less than 5 mm, but although the congenital might be a bit larger. And uh, if you see this, uh, the, compo uh, the component of uh, junctional component is absent. So the component only the nested melanocyte in the dermis area. The junctional area is absent. So uh, although it's absent, although it's in the dermis, the maturation descent still presents means uh, the cell at the superficial region usually a bit more nested and a bit larger but still uniform in size but when it go deeper the cells the melanocytes usually getting smaller and arranged in a bit more fascicle so this is uh, what we call maturation descent uh, so this is the characteristic of benign lesion so we go on to dysplastic nevus. Uh, it is a subset of melanocytic nevi, clinically atypical and histologically characterized by architectural and cytological atypia. Maybe sporadic uh, means it's not inherited or familial means in, it is inherited. Uh, the clinical features, uh, there's a mnemonic for uh, melan uh, melanocytic lesion. So if there is a A, B, C, D, E uh, features, uh, usually, it's dysplastic nevus or melanoma. So, what, what are the ABCDE? A means asymmetry. B means irregular border. C means color variation. Color variation means uh, within the lesion, uh, some area is darker, some area is lighter, or some area is uh, light brown, some area is dark brown. Uh, that is the color variation. D diameter means usually the diameter in dysplastic nevus is increasing and the size is usually more than 5 mm. E is evolution or elevation of the lesion. So uh, other than diameter, there must be also elevation, means a race uh, of the race uh, characteristic of the lesion. So uh, if uh, there, the, there, there are presence of this ABCDE features. So uh, it is likely either dysplastic nevus 
or melanoma. So localization may occur in uh, sun exposed area and non sun exposed area. So this uh, the example of the dysplastic nevus. You can see here there's a numerous of irregular nevi in the back of patient with dysplastic nevus syndrome. So if you focus higher, you can see here uh, first is asymmetry. Yes, it is asymmetry. Here is uh, not same like at, at here and here also not same at here. Uh, so the color difference also presents. Um, so here is light uh, brown, here is a bit darker brown. And you have also uh, not very well defined border. Uh, usually the size will be increasing and also the elevation of the lesion also increasing. So if we take a biopsy of the lesion, uh, usually uh, B, this, this is the compound nevus, uh, but this is uh, the compound nevus have uh, lentiginous hyperplasia. Lentiginous hyperplasia means uh, there are proliferation of nested melanocyte at the dermoepidermal junction here, means it is lentiginous hyperplasia. So, uh, and this uh, hyperplasia also, you have uh, asymmetry. Here is more than here. So, uh, this is one of the features. It's almost the same as the clinical one. And usually, you have cellular pleomorphism. Here, you see uh, the cell, the nested area here is a bit irregular. Uh, not like the previous compound nevus, which is uh, quite irregular, uh, quite small, and you have fascicles. But uh, here, it's still nested, it's still large, and it's still hyperchromatic. Hyperchromatic means the cell is uh, darker than uh, the, the normal melanocytes. Lah. So these are the features of uh, this plastic nevus. Lah. So this is compound dysplastic nevus. If you focus it uh, uh, at higher magnification, you see there is a cytological atypia. Cytological atypia, uh, actually the characteristic, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the previous lecture, you have cellular atypia and also architectural atypia. Architectural atypia means the architecture is no longer nested. Uh, you can see here the nested area is... Uh, is not regular nested, nice round nested area. It's a bit, uh, here is a bit smaller nest and here uh, it's a singly dispersed, means the cell in single, 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 not in the nested pattern. And also you can see there are cellular atypia, which is uh, cellular pleomorphism, uh, which are the cells are very in size means some cells are smaller, some cells are larger, some cells have darker nucleus, some cells have lighter nucleus, uh, and you have some of the cells have nucleoli. Uh, for example, is here. In the center, you have a small dot there. So that's a nucleoli, prominent nucleoli. So these are the cytological atypia features. Okay, and also, uh, usually in dysplastic nevus, you have this, uh, band of fibrosis uh, in between the stroma uh, adjacent to the atypical cell. So the management and prognosis, uh, if it is left uh, in familial dysplastic nevus syndrome, it is strongly associated with melanoma. If it is left alone, the lifetime risk almost 100%. In sporadic cases, usually individuals with more than 10 dysplastic nevus have higher risk for melanoma. So in this, uh, in, in this uh, higher risk individual, usually we treat uh, with white excision. What do I mean by white excision? Means we excise the lesion as well as some part of the normal tissue adjacent to the lesion. So means you preserve with white margin. So all the lesion is cleared. Lah. So no more uh, lesion left in the body. So we go on to melanoma. What, what is melanoma? Melanoma is malignant melanocytic tumor arising from melanocytes. Uh, it is a less common uh, skin cancer, only about 1%. However, it accounts for majority of death, majority of mortality due to skin cancer. The risk factor usually in uh, more in fair skin population, 
uh, what are the fair skin population at, at higher risk? Usually, at, it is at Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick scale 1 to 2. Uh, it's, uh, you can Google it later on uh, and you can see uh, how is the class scale looks like. Basically, it's, uh, it's just show uh, the, the, the individual who have lighter skin, uh, usually at scale 1 to 2. And also, if patients have family or and personal history of melanoma, usually uh, uh, it has higher risk. And of course, it's also associated with intense intermittent sun exposure uh, for artificial UV radiation. Uh, usually in melanoma, malignant melanoma, usually the patient have increased mole count and dysplastic nevus phenotype. Uh, if you study the genetic wise, uh, the patient have germline mutation in CDK N2A, CDK4, MITF, third ACD, TERF 21P, POT1, MC1R, BAP1 gene. So the important one clinically, uh, most common is CDK N2A and also BAP1 gene. These are the, the commonly tested one. Lah. Uh, in fact, BAP1 gene, it has a specific uh, pathway for melanoma lah, and it's also uh, it also have special variant and also other risk factor is immunosuppression so as I mentioned pathogenesis most important thing is UV light radiation induced DNA damage acquisition so this uh, UV radiation cause uh, the driver mutation so as I mentioned the common one uh, hereditary predisposition is a germline mutation in CDK N2A gene. So it starts with radial growth phase. Radial means it's uh, growth uh, horizontally. So uh, in radial growth phase, the malignant melanocyte proliferate along the dermoepidermal junction. Typically, the melanoma does not metastasize at this stage. And after uh, radial growth phase, or sometimes it occurs concurrently, it has it has vertical growth phase means it is uh, uh, it is uh, upside down lah, vertical uh, growth phase of the uh, tumor so in this uh, in this stage in this phase the melanoma uh, penetrate dermis and beyond and metastasis may occur at this stage so uh, these are the steps of development of melanoma so a is normal skin uh, you can see this is a normal skin with preserved surface maturation uh, so there there are uh, melanocytes interspersed uh, within the basal keratinocytes as you can see in the light brown uh, cells here so uh, it's usually it's uh, progressing so in uh, c you can see here it is a lentiginous uh, hyperplasia of the melanocytes means the there there are proliferation of uh, melanocytes at the more epidermal junction uh, and uh, when uh, and usually these stages you can see uh, there are uh, cytological atypia some are large some are small uh, some has darker nucleus some has uh, lighter nucleus so there are uh, dysplastic features. So uh, when you see at the dermis at this stage, uh, there there are still uh, there is still presence of maturation descent. So uh, later on, when it progress, uh, this is the early radial growth uh, phase of melanoma. You can see here the atypia is marked and is already asymmetrical. Here is a fairly symmetry lesion here already asymmetrical, here more than here. And usually the maturation descent is lost. Lah. So uh, you can see the uh, malignant cell, some of it already penetrating the papillary dermis, as you can see in D. And uh, when it combined to uh, radial as well as uh, vertical growth phase, you have in this picture E, you can see it's marked uh, dysplasia uh, usually it's full thickness, it's already moved uh, from the superficial uh, epidermis to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the reticular dermis here. 
you can see uh, malignant cell already present in the uh, deep dermis and some of the malignant cell are infiltrating the blood vessel. So this is uh, how melanoma progress. Uh, there are um, radial growth phase and vertical growth phase. Okay, so uh, how uh, histologically uh, correlates with uh, gene, uh, molecular alteration. So usually in benign neighbors, uh, you have initiating mutation, usually BRAF and RAS mutation. And as it progress, uh, you have telomerase activation that cause lesion with atypia. And at this stage, you have increase in point mutation. Uh, as UV radiation increasing, you have uh, melanoma with radial growth phase. Uh, then uh, the, as, uh, the point mutation also increasing. Later on, uh, as cumulative sun exposure uh, is increasing and UV radiation increasing, there will be loss of P16 uh, tumor suppressor gene that leads to uh, melanoma vertical growth phase. And in this stage also, because of there is a loss of the tumor suppressor gene, the point mutation also increasing. And then you have uh, a loss of P53 and P10 uh, gene function. Uh, then uh, in this at this stage, you have increased point mutation and copy number alteration. And uh, later on, uh, if it uh, remains untreated, you uh, this patient may have metastasis of the melanom melanocytic lesion. Lah. So the clinical features uh, varies, flat, sometimes flat, sometimes slightly elevated, nodular, polypoid, varicose, pigmented lesion. Important thing is ABCDE rule, as I mentioned earlier. So there are two uh, other signs of melanoma. Uh, we call it, the first one is ugly duckling sign. Uh, what, what it means by ugly duckling sign is, uh, it is uh, outlier lesion, uh, which is different from the other uh, nevus. Uh, usually this lesion is larger, sometimes smaller, sometimes lighter and darker. And usually the ABCD rules is uh, applied lah to the lesion. So it is asymmetry. Uh, the border is uh, not well defined, color, color variation is present, the increase in diameter is there, and elevation of the lesion is also present. Uh, so, uh, means uh, these signs uh, is highly suggestive of melanoma. Lah. So, uh, other signs uh, is a Hutchison signs. Basically, what, what is Hutchison sign? Uh, means it is a periangual extension of brown black pigmentation from longitudinal uh, melanochia into the proximal and lateral nail fold so uh, the melano melanonychia uh, is a brown pigmentation at the nail usually uh, if it is extend to the proximal part of the nail bed and uh, extends to the lateral nail fold means it's Hutchison sign positive. Uh, usually, uh, in this is uh, important in acral uh, lentiginous melanoma. Lah. Okay, so uh, again, these are the characteristic lesions of melanoma. Lesions tend to be larger, ABCDE, asymmetry, irregular border, variable color, uh, darker color, lighter color, uh, and usually you have increase in diameter, usually it's more than 5 mm, and usually it has uh, evolution elevation of the lesion. Uh, so uh, these are the characteristic clinical lesion of melanoma. However, uh, it needs to be confirmed with the biopsy. So in the biopsy, uh, you can see here in B, uh, this are the biopsy of radial growth phase. There's a nested lesion here, uh, and the nest usually a bit irregular and some has infiltrated into the dermis. And here you can see it's a, it has dense lymphocytic infiltrates around the tumor cells. So if you go for higher magnification again, uh, here you can see the vertical growth phase. You have the nodular aggregates of infiltrating tumor within the dermis. And this tumor, uh, you have this melanin pigment. Uh, some of the cell has melanin pigment and it has 
uh, cytological atypia lah. So uh, again, you can see here at higher magnification, you can see these are characteristic of uh, melanoma. Usually the cells have uh, nuclear pleomorphism. Some of the cells has uh, eosinophilic nucleoli like this one. Eosinophilic means it's a bright pink, uh, although not so bright pink, but you can uh, a bit appreciate on the eosinophilic nucleoli here. And also you can see here, eosinophilic nucleoli means the dot uh, within the nucleus. And uh, you have dermal mitosis. These are the dermal mitosis. So uh, one of the uh, prognostic factor is uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy. So in sentinel lymph node biopsy, uh, this uh, example of sentinel lymph node biopsy, usually it's difficult for you to see, uh, for pathologists to see uh, early stages of uh, metastasis in sentinel lymph node biopsy. So sometimes we do uh, immunohistochemistry uh, to s highlight the uh, melanoma. So uh, there are few uh, typical melanocytic marker. In this uh, slides, it is HMB45. Other melanocytic marker is SOX10 and uh, S100. So this marker uh, might be useful uh, for pathologists to diagnose the metastasis, uh, particularly in early stages in sentinel lymph node. Okay, so what are the classification of uh, melanoma? So in uh, latest WHO, it classified based on uh, the genetic pathway of the lesion. So the genetic pathway of the lesion usually divided into melanoma arising in sun-exposed uh, skin and also melanoma arising from sun-shielded uh, skin, means no sun exposure. So uh, in this uh, pathway, uh, in this lecture, I will present mainly uh, on the sun-exposed skin. Lah. What you uh, heard just now is mainly for the sun-exposed uh, skin. Lah. So uh, just uh, for your information, uh, there are uh, nine pathways. So pathway one to pathway nine. And each of the pathway has uh, different uh, histological diagnosis and also different uh, molecular genetic uh, characteristic and different prognosis. So why is it important? Okay, so I mentioned a bit deeper. For example, uh, for superficial spreading melanoma, it is a most common type of malignant melanoma. So usually it occurs uh, on the lower extremity, arms and upper back. Usually it is more of a radial uh, radial phase, lah, radial growth pattern. So uh, we go on to lentigo maligna melanoma. It's most commonly found in elderly with extension of the lesion into the dermis. But uh, this lesion also uh, does not have a prominent vertical phase. Then you have nodular melanoma, uh, which can be found in UV exposed area. Uh, it has no radial growth phase, only vertical growth phase. Uh, demonstrated at presentation. And you have acral lentiginous melanoma. It's not related to sun exposure, more commonly in African-American and Asian population. And this lesion found commonly in palm soles beneath the nail and has poor prognosis. So acral means usually, uh, acral means it's at the foot. Lah. So uh, it's first described at the foot area. So that's why they call it acral lentiginous melanoma so uh, and also usually it's beneath the nail and poor prognosis so this also important in clinical practice so management uh, early stages majority of the superficial lesion uh, curable surgically by white excision uh, metastatic melanoma has a very poor prognosis uh, in metastatic melanoma you have targeted therapy as well as immunotherapy so uh, actually the targeted therapy in these three is uh, uh, only two are targeted therapy, which BRAF and KIT inhibitor. Okay, just I want to explain more of on this on the third section, uh, PD-1 inhibitor. PD-1 inhibitor is actually is uh, immunotherapy. 
so what is pd1 pd1 is actually is a uh, receptor at the our inflammatory cells uh, which is uh, lymphocytes and macrophages so uh, this pd1 will bind to uh, pd ligand 1 means pdl1 so the pdl1 uh, actually uh, usually have normally in our uh, normal uh, normal tissue lah. for example normal skin tissue so that our inflammatory cell does not attack uh, our normal tissue however some of the tumor cells also develop uh, the receptor for pdl1 so when the tumor cell has receptor for pdl1 the inflammatory cell cannot attack the tumor so uh, you have a pd1 inhibitor so it binds to the pd1 receptor at the uh, at the <coughs> at the uh, inflammatory cells so that uh, the tumor cell uh, pd1 a uh, pdl1 uh, receptor cannot bind to the inflammatory cell receptor so uh, by doing this, the our own uh, inflammatory cell, lymphocytes as well as macrophages, attack the tumor cell uh, by itself, lah. So, uh, so this is what we call immunotherapy. This is a very new therapy, just recently available for few tumor. One of it is melanoma. The other tumor is uh, the other tumor are uh, lung cancer and uh, stomach cancer uh, there are very few but uh, in the future maybe when you are graduated uh, when you you graduated later on uh, later this uh, inhibitor might uh, might have more uh, roles in other tumor as well so what are the prognostic factor in melanoma uh, first is the depth of invasion uh, breast low thickness and clock level uh, this also uh, also has uh, also involved in prognostic of other malignant skin tumor such as squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, other prognostic factor is ulceration. Usually, presence of ulceration uh, will increase one level in the staging of melanoma. Uh, and uh, other prognostic factor is presence of metastasis, regional lymph node metastasis. Uh, sentinel lymph node metastasis and also extra nodal extension of the malignancy uh, uh, to the extra nodal area means there are metastasis to the lymph nodes but uh, within these lymph nodes the malignant cells also uh, also uh, invade more than just the lymph node it's go uh, in infiltrating the capsule and the fatty tissue surrounding the lymph node and other prognostic factor is dermal mitotic count tumor infiltrating uh, lymphocytes if there is a lot of tumor infiltrating lymphocytes usually it has favorable diagnosis because as you know these lymphocytes uh, provide uh, uh, inflammation that might uh, kill the tumor and this also important uh, if uh, the patient wants to undergo uh, PD-1 inhibitor therapy. So if there is, uh, the tumor has PD-L1 positive and a lot of tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, uh, so it is uh, favorable uh, for treatment with PD-L1 receptor. And other prognostic factor is lymphovascular invasion. The presence indicate adverse prognosis. Uh, other than that uh, is perineural invasion. Uh, so if there is presence of perineural invasion, usually it has increased local recurrence rate. So what are breast low thickness? So breast low thickness means uh, the depth of the tumor uh, usually measured from the granular layer of the skin surface here, granular layer, into the deepest part of the tumor. So the deepest part of the tumor is at this region. So this length is the breast low thickness. And if let's say the patient have ulceration, 
usually we take the base of the ulcer as the uh, superior border and the inferior border we use the deepest part of the tumor infiltration okay uh, the other one uh, to demonstrate the depth of uh, invasion is a clock level usually the level one uh, the tumor is only involving the dermis, epidermis level two the tumor involving uh, epidermis and papillary dermis level three the tumor involving the uh, epidermis uh, extending into the uh, reticular dermis uh, and level four uh, you have the tumor uh, extending beyond the reticular dermal interface means beyond the reticular uh, dermal interface uh, usually it's a bit deeper to the reticular dermis level three just approaching the reticular dermis but still not uh, not infiltrating the reticular dermis and level five usually it's already infiltrating the subcutaneous tissue so these are the club level so higher level means poorer prognosis same as breast low thickness the thicker it is the poorer prognosis it has so these are my references so i think that's all for my lecture today